This program is brought to you by Sam Cedar, the San Mateo County Economic Development Association. Hi, I'm Roseanne Faust. I'm the president and CEO of Sam Cedar, and welcome to more than the bottom line. Why should you invest the next 20 to 30 minutes of your time in watching? Have you ever wondered about the people and purpose behind various businesses on the peninsula in Silicon Valley? Who works there? Why? What do these companies and organizations really contribute to our communities? If you're even a little bit curious, take a moment and hear their stories and why business is more than the bottom line. For seven decades, the San Mateo County Economic Development Association, better known as SAMCEDA, has championed the business community by convening and connecting them to the communities in which they make their home. People hear about Genentech and Oracle, but do they know about Design Tech High School and Future Labs? My guess is no, but even if you have, we're going to tell these stories and many more. The stories of your friends and neighbors who work there and how they contribute and collaborate through their employers with our food banks, our schools, our youth sports teams, our art and cultural groups, our veterans and seniors, how their companies give back and believe in more than the bottom line. On today's episode, we'll have Ashley Stanley with BKF Engineers and Shelly Doran of WebCore Builders. We'll be right back. Welcome back to More Than the Bottom Line. With me today is Ashley Stanley, an associate with BKF Engineers. Welcome, Ashley. It's so great to have you. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here. So what we'd like to do today is you are a woman in the engineering field, and that is unusual still today in 2019. So I'd love for you to share with the audience about your background, how you landed at BKF, and how BKF is a different company and really focused on more than the bottom line. Yeah, so again, thank you for having me here today. I'm, I'm sort of shocked that you know you'd want to talk to me and and that still in 2019 uh, women are not readily in the engineering fields and so math and science is still something that we're pushing to elementary schools and telling little girls and boys that they can do it so um, i became a civil engineer because quite honestly it sounds a little cliche but someone told me that i could be an engineer um, and so my whole family, they're all teachers. I still have a lot of teachers in our family and I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, but I also sort of had this nagging feeling of wanting to get out of my small town. Um, I grew up in Chico. So we thought we were Northern California and being here in the Bay Area, you know, still Northern California, but I wanted to get out and I wanted to try something new. And um, I was hesitantly courageous to go try something new. And, and someone told me that I could be an engineer. And Do you so, remember who? Does I remember it? who, and we know them today, and they're family friends, and she knows that I'm an engineer. And um, That's exciting. I, I mean, I it must make great. her very proud. I hope so, and, and I hope that even though I don't feel like we're trailblazing, and it is 2019, and there are plenty of women in this industry, there still is a large majority of men, and I, I think that we have to continue to tell people that you can do it too and then people will stick with it and Absolutely. they will become engineers. I just think that, that the way that you think about it too, and I've been in BKF, I've known BKF a long time, it's an old company. Tell us about the mentoring program you have. 
for men and women? Yeah, so, and I might give you a little bit of a long answer on this one because it, it was sort of organic in the way we started it. Um, our industry, when you come out of school as a civil engineer, everything that you learn is something that someone has taught you. And so we're doing the same thing that the Romans and the Greeks were doing you know, several thousand years ago, right? We're bringing water to people's projects and we're getting waste out. And really civil engineering is where are you in the world and, and how do I make this work, right? So we're just a part of a team. Um, and I really came to BKF because I wanted to be a part of a team and they had a great reputation in the industry, as you mentioned, over a hundred years in Redwood City. And I think um, certified as the first members of the Redwood City Chamber of Commerce, which we're really proud about. And, uh, we're really proud of. And so I really wanted to be a part of the BKF team. And organically, over time, we realized that we had to make a point to explain to people all of the, the facets and assets of a mentoring program and formalize it. And so all of this on the job training that we had been doing to teach people mm -hmm. when they come out of school, we really wanted to highlight and we challenged ourselves to highlight what is it that we're doing on a daily basis and how could we improve upon it and how could we internally advertise it to make sure that it's available to everybody. And so again, going back to that thread of telling people that they can do it and that that they do belong and making sure that they understand those resources that are available. So we've started this mentorship program and we've called it Spark. And really we came up with that of a collaborative of women who really said, hey, this is important to us to show other women in the company that there's a path for them and that they belong and really to spark ideas in everybody in the company on how could they support this next generation. Um, everybody can really find a place in that, that word of mentorship. And so we've started that program to, to foster those ideas. And what I loved when I was in BKF last September, it was interesting to come into your conference room. And actually I saw men and women of every age represented in the dialogue that myself and one of your principals had. Right. And in seeing their faces and the questions that they ask, what are some of the things you've seen that have come up in the discussion that young people, young engineers in the field really need to know? Yeah, I mean, I'll start with sort of this basic connection to what's happening in our society right now, which is all of these different movements, right? And I think that it made people, especially millennials, stop and think about where are they in their own careers and in their own lives. And people really started questioning, do I need more support? Do uh, Am I being left behind? And in a lot of industries, and I know a lot of people, they are being left behind. And what we were really happy to find out was that at BKF, people weren't being left behind, but they did need to have this connection to their path, right? And it's a lot of hard work to get where you're going. You've, you've worked really hard. I, when I look around at people who are successful and that I admire, they're working really hard to get where they're going. And so we've had a lot of conversations that we didn't expect to have. So people are saying, hey, I want to get to your position. Um, who did you know to get to your position? And you're going, I didn't know anybody, right? I came to work every day. I worked really hard. I tried to fill a role that somebody needed. I tried to make my boss's job easier, right? And so really, it, it's been exciting to share that the secret is that there is no secret. And so we've been really surprised by that and pleasantly, you know, also surprised that people are receiving it so well. They're excited to know that if they show up to work every day and work really hard and learn what we do as a business, that they'll have that chance for success. So we've been excited by that. Well, and I think the support and the making a difference, BKF is a terrific company. I mean, you are an industry leader in civil engineering. And I think about also how you give back to the community, that BKF isn't just about the bottom line as the constant theme of the show. Right. So you're engaged in youth sports. People in your company are in nonprofits. Can you comment on that? Yeah, so when I think about why BKF does what it does. I think it, it's born from the fact that we're a private company with with owners who are part of this community, right? And so they've raised kids here and they've been successful in the business and they've seen that, you know, this is 
that, they, that it's important for them to be a part of this community. And so it's really just an integral part of what they've formed at BKF. And I've just really been able to step into it for the last six years and, and really benefit from it and also start to give back. But we've got programs, um, it's written into our handbook. And you know, we have a handbook that says, if your child has something at your school, please go, we will figure it out. Um, which is just amazing for somebody to write down and tell you that, right? Because- In an HR handbook. That's right, because I think we're all trying to show up and do our, our best job that we can every day. And, and you feel bad asking for those experiences. And we do it at every level, right? So if you're brand new at our company and that's important to you or you've been there a long time, that's a part of what we're um, explaining and extending to families and parents. And not everybody is a family or um, is part of a family or, or has children, but the benefits of giving back. Um, we do Rebuilding Together, which if you're yes. familiar with, it, it, it's one of our most popular events. People look forward to it. They're very upset if they can't go and they're going out in the community and helping somebody build their house and, and put in some manual labor to help them get off of their feet. Um, that is fantastic. I want to have you pause. Um, we're going to be right back to more than the bottom line. Thank you and stay tuned. Welcome back to More Than the Bottom Line. With me today is Ashley Stanley, an associate with BKF Engineers. Ashley, thank you again for being here today. We've covered a lot of ground, and what I'd like to do now is have you share with us some challenges you face in the engineering field. And then also, if you could share with us a funny story, and I'll circle back to that, but let's start with challenges. Sure. You know, one of the things that I've realized in, you know, being in this industry and just being out of school and in my professional and, and you know, family life that you're building, it, I think I've been out of school almost 15 years, which, you know, time really flies. But I think when you get out of school, you think that there's some manual that you can read yes. or that people know something that you don't or you are so right on maybe they're smarter than you and they probably are but I, I don't know I just my college experience and I think this is worth noting my college experience wasn't easy I really kind of fought my way through it and was away from home and it, and it was a difficult experience for me but the reason I mentioned that is because I learned how to work really hard for what I wanted or what I thought I wanted or what was important to me at the time and I've really just transferred that into my work life you know I came out you feel like you don't know anything I remember telling my mom I just want to be able to answer one question on my own um, and you just keep working at it and you find those resources and you find mentors. And I think it's important to note that it's not easy, right? So I feel like my whole college experience, my whole work life and professional life has been a challenge. And, and that doesn't mean that I've faced severe adversity or anything, but it's not easy. And I think that that's worth noting to people that, you know, you look around and, and this Instagram world and everything's so public, right? And it, I think it, there's more than meets the eye and how hard people work to get where they're going so I love the fact that you are willing to say that oh sure that is huge and I remember when we were in the conference room and you were very honest with your colleagues and you said it isn't easy sure and that's okay but it's that acceptance of it so tell us a funny story I know our audience would love to hear well and, and this is you know no slight to anyone but I will say being a woman in engineering um, it constantly throws people off and so because there's such good technology and we oftentimes don't meet clients or groups for long periods of time because we interact um, with teleconference or on emails and so people constantly um, will address me as stand Family. And so, heaven forbid that there's a woman on the other end and her name is Ashley. Um, so I have become used to receiving emails and phone calls and Stanley, we need this from you. And this is not a sports environment, right? I mean, right. we're engineers this is a in, a, in a cubicle. professional environment. And so um, I, I've learned to take that in stride, right? But I think that's a big part of what I try to pass on to other people as well is there's going to be challenges, there's going to be adversity. And if somebody on the front end or even midway through your career, or even on the back end of your career can tell you that you can can do it and that it's worth sticking with it even if someone calls you by your last name because they think you're a guy. It's great career advice. 
I love how BKF, 100-year-old Redwood City Company. Yeah, we're so first, proud of that. And I'm so proud that you're in the community where I live. And everything that I know about the company, the principals, the associates, the fact that you're on serving on the SAMCETA board now, I'm very, very grateful. And I want to thank you for being with us today on More Than the Bottom Line. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to More Than the Bottom Line. With me in this segment is Shelly Doran, Senior Vice President at WebCore. Hi, Shelly. Thanks Hello. for being here today. Thanks, Roseanne. Thanks for having me. So what I would like you to share with the audience is about yourself, about WebCore, and how you ended up being the Senior Vice President at one of the major companies in the Bay Area, California, and let's just go beyond. Sure, sure. Well, so my journey started literally over 40 years ago. Um, when, when you were 10. When I was 10, when mm -hmm. I got out of college, um, I actually wanted to be a great designer. And I found out quite quickly that, first of all, it didn't pay. And second of all, I just hated dealing with like homeowners. <laughs> I just didn't <laughs> like it. So to make a really long story short, I was working in a store planning division of a major East Coast department store. And around the store they were building, I met a contractor on an escalator who was building part of the mall around the store that we were planning. And we started commuting together. And he said to me, you know what, you're kind of wasting your talents doing what you're doing. You took architecture, you took design. Why don't you come to work for us and go into the field and build stores? And I thought I was dumb enough not to really think about it. I was young enough that, you know, I had all the time in the world. So I said, sure. And I left my job and I went back to school and I took some classes in estimating and non-structural plan check and plumbing and mechanical and electrical things that, you know, you could be quick study in a community college. And I went to work for them. And I went out into the field at uh, 24 years old wow. into the south on my very first project on a job site. So it was a very long time ago and it was just like getting thrown into the fire. But, you know, I learned by the seat of my pants doing that. Well, I want to hear about the impressions of going to work in the south in a typical man's career. Sure. Um, but I'd love for you to tell us about WebCore. How sure. long have you been with them? A little bit about the company. Sure, thanks. Well, WebCore, um, as you know, was founded on the peninsula about 48 or 49 years ago. And it was the um, brainchild of William Wilson, who was William Wilson Development, who was developing Redwood Shores. And he had two men working with him who had graduated from Purdue University together and were in construction, and he thought what a great way to put together a development company was to have builders working within your development company. So the W in WebCore is William Wilson, the E is Ross Edwards, the B is Dave Boyd, company, C-O, and then R is Miller Reams, who just unfortunately passed away. So that's how WebCore was born, and it was actually born at Redwood Shores. It was all the large wow. development surrounding Marine World many years ago. Today, Marine World is the home of Oracle, Oracle. Corporation. I mean, people don't know this. They have right. no idea this goes on on the peninsula. And tell us a little bit, WebCore is a very philanthropic company. Yes. It is, you give back. I know the nonprofits that you serve on. Thank you for serving on the SAMCETA board. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, well, so we feel like we want to be sure that we give back to the communities that our employees live and work. So we have several different dimensions of philanthropy at WebCore, starting with City Build, which is out of San Francisco. City Build is a vocational um, learning facility that we seed funded several years ago, and it takes kids from high school or like up to age 24, and it puts them into a vocational training program, and we send our people in to work to train these employees, and a lot of them end up then going into the union trades. That's one of our philanthropic programs. Another program that we're involved in lately is Halt Homelessness. 
So we have um, formed a consortium with some architects and engineers in the Bay Area to look at building the first homeless project, homeless housing project, somewhere in the south quadrant of San Francisco. We work on rebuilding together. We also do internal programs. We've partnered with the SFPUC for a neurodiversity program where we take, uh, where we take uh, not just kids, but we take adults who have intellectual inabilities mm -hmm. and are putting them to work in our jobs and on our job sites and having programs to help them grow and, and learn skill set. So there's philanthropy at several levels at WebCore. Shelly, your company, WebCore, is addressing so many of the needs of the Bay Area right now. And when we come back, I want to delve a little bit more into that and then also hear stories about your career and what you face the challenges. So we'll be right back to More Than the Bottom Line with Shelly Doran of WebCore. Welcome back to More Than the Bottom Line. With me today is Shelly Doran, the Senior Vice President of WebCore. Before the break, Shelly, we were talking about your career trajectory. And you said you began um, on the East Coast and then you had your first job down in the South. Tell us a funny story about that. So I was 24 years old and I'm small of stature and I've long blonde hair back then, and I was on this job site in Florence, Kentucky. And I had this, um, these carpenters that were working for me, and I had um, an electrician who was kind of a burly kind of a guy, and he could not understand why there was a girl on the job site, you know. And I was looking in this electrical box, and I saw that there was a mistake. And I said to him, sir, uh, you're going to have to take this out. And he's like, you know, Girl, I've been doing this for 30 years and there's, you know, no like blonde hair girl's gonna tell me to rip something out. And I just said to him, I hold your paycheck. I hold your paycheck. <laughs> so literally, he did it. So that was kind of an example of how things were back then. Did he recognize that it was a mistake? Or did he ever, I probably never he admitted probably that. He probably did, and didn't, but he was lazy and taking a shortcut, and there weren't any shortcuts when you were dealing with electrical panels, so. No, yeah. and we want our electrical panels yeah. to work right. Yeah. That's yeah. important. Well, fast forward. You've been at WebCore now 20 years. Almost 20, yeah. And I know that there's a great mentoring program. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Well, so in our industry in construction, you know, it was traditionally a man's industry for, for many years. And over the years, thank goodness, a lot of the universities have brought on programs, construction management programs, and have eagerly sought to recruit women to the programs. So, you know, when we recruit, we recruit the best and the brightest. So we're not targeting or micro-targeting, but there's been a lot of women in the programs lately. But when they come into the industry, it's still a male-dominated industry. So we formed a group at WebCore through our HR department called the Women of WebCore. And it's more of a kind of a, not even a support group, it's what are women doing in the field? What's the latest going on? Let's share some issues of, Excellent. you know, being parents, commuting. It's really no different for the men and the women, but the women like to get together, talk about these things, what's next for women, where are women going in the industry. So it's a social group, it's a group of looking at what's next, and it's a group of actually showing the women coming into the company, the younger women coming into the company, or the less experienced, that there is trajectory to the top. Because when you look across the country, there are not a lot of construction companies that have women at the top of their executive board. So we want to show our women that there's a path forward to get to the top and it's really important for them and it's a great recruiting tool for us too. It must be terrific basically for the men and women and the leadership I mean you are the senior vice president you are in a leadership role so I think having those mechanisms whereby the new employees coming in can benefit is just terrific I mean it sets the tone for where the company is going. And I'd like you to talk about, you have some amazing projects on the peninsula that 
people don't, they might have seen the WebCore sign, right. but can you tell us a little bit about those? Sure. Well, I think really the most prominent one on the peninsula is at the intersection of 101 and Marsh Road, where <laughs> the Bohannon Company, who's owned that land for many years, three generations, had finally decided and had gotten the political will to develop. So now there are not only one, two, three, four major uh, buildings which house uh, Facebook employees. There's four garages and there's the first hotel to be built on the peninsula in probably 15 years that opened at that intersection also. So that's kind of the catalyst for that whole corridor to develop. And then when you look at the old Bay Meadows land, yes. you know, you look at what Wilson Meany has done on that site, they've transformed this into a transit-oriented live-work village which is what the peninsula needs to be. So those are big signature projects for us along the peninsula. And you know, we did develop the world famous Oracle headquarters yes, after Bill Wilson, you know, took down Marine World, yeah. And when you think about it, and I know in later editions of the show, we are gonna talk about, people know Oracle, but right. they don't know about Design Tech High School. Oh, right. So hearing how companies are really making the peninsula home, but also integrating themselves in the community. And here's a family, the Bohannon family, three generations, and they saw the political will. And you've been a part of many of, I would say, the signature projects on the peninsula. What advice would you give those coming in now? Right. I think it's really, and you probably know this really, it's a game of persistence. First of all, you have to be persistent about what you do, but you have to have a good plan. You have to have a good, responsible plan that not only takes into account what you want, but what the community wants. It's really important to engage the community in what you're gonna be building on the peninsula because these projects are so close to what what's near and dear to people, the places that they live. So I would say, having a trustworthy community program, I would say having a responsible plan, and also you have to be able to invest back in the community. You can't take something from them without giving something back. And you have to engage them in your project as a trusted partner of the community. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you for saying that because that truly embodies the idea and the premise behind this show more than the bottom line. I wanna thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for joining our community because it is our community. And thank you to our viewers for watching More Than The Bottom Line. episode of More Than The Bottom Line, we're gonna have a segment featuring Guess the Company. I'm gonna give you some hints, and then we're going to have the reveal. So, the first Guess the Company is founded in 2005 in the city of San Mateo, above a pizzeria and a Japanese restaurant. Three of the founders worked at PayPal. The domain name for this company was registered on February 14th as a dating site. Currently, in 2019, in an average month, eight out of 10, 18 to 49 year olds watch. Who is this company? The company is YouTube. YouTube was bought by Google in 2006. There are 300 hours of video uploaded every minute. There are 1.3 billion users and the worldwide corporate headquarters for YouTube is located in our very own San Bruno. Thank you for joining us on today's edition of More Than The Bottom Line. We look forward to seeing you the next time. This program is brought to you by Sam Sita, the San Mateo County Economic Development Association.